Hi, it's Mitch from Hard Intentions. It's been a while since I've done a video, but uh, we also have hardintentions.com where we sell t-shirts and all that good stuff. Some of you guys know, please check us out. We appreciate your patronage there. Uh, some people refer to me as Smiley the Clown. Clown <laughs> Yeah, Clown Smiley. Uh, you know, Mr. Mike Thompson's out of jail. Like I said, he's out on his own reconnaissance, which is an OR. That means the judge lets you out without bail. He went from having a no bail case to his OR. And he insists that he gets no favor from law enforcement and that law enforcement is uh, out to get him. I find that very hard to believe, being that he is the number one uh, witness assistant for law enforcement from a former prison gang member, supposedly, um, you know, leader. Uh, this guy testified against more people than any other um, former prison gang member that I've ever heard of. I don't know a lot of them personally. Um, you know, you hear tell things when you're in the joint. Uh, you know, Harpo and Jerry were the first ones that I heard of that dropped out and became informants. They gave them their own area to hatch be called Super Block. Uh, you know, they were homosexuals and they got to live together and do whatever they did. But anyway, this guy's out. And uh, one of the first things he does is he talks about, you know, DNA like he's an expert. And then he uh, he's talking about his, the woman who says she, she's his daughter. Um, you know, he says that uh, his mother was raped. So his daughter's aunt doesn't have the DNA from her, his father. She has a different father because her mom was raped. And so his daughter's DNA is not going to fully get all the DNA from her, meaning the Native American stuff. Uh, you know, guys, I know that we're Tracy with him and San Quentin with him. Uh, you know, when he first came to prison and later on, uh, swear up down, you know, he's just a white dude from Orange County. All this stuff about being raised on an Indian reservation, you know, whatever, you know, make up your own mind. Here's the deal. Um, uh, he kind of like, he doesn't even know if she's his daughter now. Hey, check this out. All he has to do is take an ancestry DNA test and that'll prove all that. Real simple. I swear, well, I believe He's not Native American. He says uh, even if he doesn't have any Native American blood in his veins, he's Native American at heart. And I know some Native Americans that are friends of mine that would probably disagree with the dancing with wolves theory. Um, yeah, so number one, take the ancestry DNA test. I did it and found out I have a brother I never knew of, that my father is actually not who I thought was. So you can find out, and here's the deal, anyone that's taken an ancestry DNA test will pop up on your chart when you take yours. So do that, just, you know, you'll learn some stuff about yourself, <clears throat> you know, your European ancestry, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, I thought it was kind of, I don't know, he's upset with her character assassination of him. And the bottom line is he he's assaulted his own character, um, you know, and, and then, uh, Let's see, he talks about, you know, write-ups and stuff in prison. They're, they're really not that easy to get. Um, my original case in San Diego County, um, I tried to get my transcripts. They said my case was too old. Unless I had a lawyer and lots of money, I probably wasn't going to get copies of my court transcripts. Not that easy to get. I'm sure prison information is probably even more difficult to get it's not it is public information because it's state government agencies but they're not it's not that easy to get minute bullshit like chronos and all that here's the other thing he showed a chrono from a, saying he was a native american all that i could go into captain's office or committee and say hey i'm black and i want to be classified as black and they'll classify me as black you don't have to have any special shit, you know, to be, you know, people do it all the time, especially nowadays. The prisons are fucking weird, <laughs> you know. Uh, so there's that, you know. Um, prisons don't do DNA tests to find out your ethnicity. The only DNA I gave in prison was um, 
as a violent offender, how to give DNA. They want to know if you're committed any other felonies out there, like this guy Stick. Turns out he raped and murdered some women up in Yosemite. DNA proved it. So they're not real big on DNA ethnic testing in prison. It's not uh, some conducive to their program. <clears throat> he also said that uh, some gang coordinator in a county jail came down and told him there was a guy named Smiley the Clown that had a podcast and he was advocating uh, people go to the county jail and, and, and assassinate him. So I'm assuming that's me. <laughs> uh, I'm not a clown, but um, I'm glad you think so. You know, clowns are pretty cool. They entertain people, right? Uh, I never uh, advocated anyone uh, going to county jail and killing him. I know he was out of Lake County. It was in the newspaper. Everything I said about him in this case was in the newspaper. You see, that's something he does a lot. When he postures up and at the end of this posture, he says, you see, you see. So you see, it was in the newspaper. <laughs> I actually thought that he was in the Sacramento County Jail. Not, I know he was from Lake County, but, and now he says the district attorney made it public information where he lives, you know. Uh, he also says that, uh, you know, guys like me sat around slinging ink and doing artwork and enjoying our life and comfort. Um, yeah, okay. And that we never had any write-ups for violence and so on and so forth. Uh, never did any whole time. That's actually not true. I did a little bit of whole time. Uh, I actually did put in a little bit of work. I've been in a couple riots, uh, you know. 120 to 11 was one. Southsiders jumped on us a couple times in Lancaster. But here's the difference between me and guys like the person I'm talking about. Um, I didn't go out and say, oh, this guy's family has a business, so I'm going to fucking use the threat of violence to extort him. Uh, this guy brought in a little bit of dope. I'm going to stab the motherfucker because he won't give me any. Uh, I can't extort this guy. I can't pressure that guy. I can't take that guy's shit, so I'm going to kill him. I'm going to have him stab. Or I'm going to scare the fuck out of this guy and make him stab that guy, and then later on I'm going to have that guy stab. Right? That's not the kind of shit I did. Uh, when, when myself, my friends, my homeboys, or the whites in general uh, were in jeopardy, threat of violence and death and all that shit. That's when I did shit. I didn't go around preying on people and calling it just business, you know? Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And uh, a lot of shit you do, you don't try to get caught. I know that's a big thing now. Guys want to show their shit. Look what I did. When I was in the joint, that wasn't a thing. And the thing was to try to get away with it. Um, you know, he says his crime partner is the one that did everything. So once again, he's telling. He said his crime partner said, I just did what Mike told me to do. Well, now he's the victim of information coming from an informant, which he is an informant. So now he's got the picture of what it's like to be informed on. Only on a smaller level. He gave good dudes life sentences and all that. Uh, so he says that uh, basically his crime partner was had a gambling habit. And he was uh, involved with a methamphetamine crew who uh, used to kick in mailboxes and take people's EDD information or something, right? Well, that's not what the article said. The article said that homeless people, some were who were veterans, um, through his uh, work as a counselor of some type, right, social worker, uh, he, was, he was signing them up for EDD and never giving them the card and then using the card to extract the money out of the bank that was supposed to go to them. That's what the article said. It didn't say anybody kicked in a mailbox. It didn't say anyone stole the information. It said that they signed these people up. Now, maybe they're lying. Who knows? They lied on me to get me a life sentence for something I didn't do. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so, you know, there's always that. Maybe they are lying. Who knows? It'll come out. Let's say the proof is in the pudding. So um, he hasn't, uh, 
had a preliminary hearing yet in over a year. Uh, you know, I find that kind of odd, you know, that he could sit in, out on the OR for over a year and not have a preliminary hearing unless his lawyers are postponing it. <sighs> so he's got some high power lawyers out of San Francisco. <clears throat> Free charge, I guess. I wouldn't get that. If I got busted for something right now, guilty or innocent, I'd probably get a public defender because I don't have a lot of fucking money and I don't have a lot of prestige as a, as an informant from a prison gang. Um, you know, he says he didn't get any deals as a, as an informant and he did it out of conviction. And so I would say this, I did 38 years on a second degree murder that I did not commit. He did 45 years in prison, 10 years of that. He was involved with gang activity, right? So he did 35 years, he had a double murder. He had, he did 35 years after the gang activity and he got out. So I would say he didn't do that much time. Uh, I have a friend that had uh, double murder, uh, you know, Rotten Richard, <laughs> uh, guy I know. Anyway, uh, he did about 45 years. And, you know, he paroled as a very old man. And he had bad health, all kinds of shit. So, and he was never a prison gang member. Uh, so, you know, there are guys doing that much time who are not prison gang members. Uh, my friend that lives down here, Big Mick, uh, not Mick from San Diego, but uh, anyway, uh, he did 45 years for one murder. So I think he did get some favor uh, by being an informant. He said he didn't make any deals. They're not going to make a formal, formal deal with you. But they did put him in protective housing and all that shit. Um, he said that uh, his daughter's lying. She never saw Charlie Manson. She uh, didn't have to go through any special gates or anything. So when she went to visit him in Corcoran, uh, the main line visiting 3, 3A, 3B, 3C, they each have their own visiting room. And you have to go off the yard to the visiting room. Do a pop gate and over there, right? PHU visiting was not in the main line visiting. They had their own visiting. So she might have been telling the truth. And if Charlie had a visit while he was on a visit, she could have took photographs with him. I have photographs. You can, by the way, take photographs in the visiting room with other inmates and their families as well. It is something that they do allow. You can't take photographs on the yard anymore. Maybe in a protective housing unit in Corcoran, that's not possible. Uh, you know, he says that uh, he's a practicing the keto or some kind of martial arts and he's uh, physically fit for any challenges that come and, uh, you know, he's going to defend himself. Yeah, you know, and he puts it out there like, uh, you know, guys that bump their gums, I'm assuming he means me, are not going to bust a grape. Here's the deal. I was never in a prison gang. I don't give a fuck about him being a dropout. I don't care about that. Um, I don't I don't like him really because he's an informant. And look, he's not some guy minding his own business, got an argument with someone. Uh, the guy stabbed him. So he gave up information on that or some prison gang guy stabbed him and he gave up. It's not that's not his deal. I don't really care about that kind of shit, you know. Guys get their feelings hurt when they get stabbed and they do shit, right? Um, uh, he was the guy who was a predator. He was the guy making life hard for white dudes. He's the guy who possibly, maybe, people are in the graves right now because of his actions in one way or another, whether he put them there himself or had it done or whatever. And so he went from that to being an informant. Right. And not only is he an informant, um, he gave guys life sentence on information that was not true. He did not have direct contact with the people he informed on. In other words, like uh, Joey told me he stabbed that guy five times in the back and once in the neck. Right. He, he went on, testified on hearsay uh, because he was supposedly a leader. He had access to this information. He, you know, he, and he gave these dudes life sentences. Um, and then he said, you know, uh, that people that don't like informants, 
basically it's because they're involved with criminal lifestyle, um, gangs and criminal organizations. Um, you know, I'm not in a gang. I never have been ever. I'm not even in a motorcycle club. I never have been. Um, I grew up around motorcycle clubs. I have friends that are motorcycle clubs and I love them to death and they're not involved with criminal activity. Um, the thing is this, man, you went from being, you know, a killer, uh, tough guy gang member to ratting on people. And, you know, it's kind of reprehensible. Nobody likes an informant who informs on people for his own benefit. You know, word is, you know, dude was in the hat with other guys in his gang who have passed away since. And that's why he checked in. Um, you know, if he was, he said that he didn't like the fact that they were going to kill Steve Barnes' dad. Well, you know what? He could have dropped out before they got out and killed that guy's dad. And it would have saved his dad's life. He didn't drop out because of that. He dropped out because he knew he was in the hat. He pissed off somebody who had been in that organization for quite a long time before him and who I always heard was a pretty decent guy. Rest in peace. I don't want to say, you know, I don't really name a lot of names here. So that's why he quit. And here's another thing. He says, if, you know, if, if, if you don't like informants, what he did, he informed on somebody supposedly who killed a woman and two kids in another state. Okay, he got the guy a life sentence. That guy never told him he did that. He had no knowledge about that firsthand. It's all rumor. And so here's the deal. He said, if you, if you don't agree with him ratting on that guy, then that means you're all for killing women and kids. Well, that's not the case. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes people that kill kids. No one. Okay. So here's the deal. If you knew when you're an active member of a prison gang, shot caller, right? You knew this guy did that, right? Why didn't you whack him? Or why didn't you have him whacked when you could have, right? Instead, you saved all the bits and pieces of information you got and fabricated a story and to your own benefit and went and testified against him. I think they snuck him into the courthouse in a fucking soda machine. <laughs> you know, why didn't you whack the dude? If you're that adamant about, you know, this guy killed two kids and a woman, which I find kind of reprehensible myself, um, you know, why don't you have him whacked when you're a shot caller? Instead, you save that information for later so you can use it to your own benefit. Anyone's going to believe that a guy testifies against the amount of people he testified against and got no favor is crazy. Guys don't fall out and become informants just for the good of their own convictions you see every time he postures he says you see um <laughs> you know he talks about stuff like he's an expert he's been through some self-help shit same thing i went through before i got out of prison in the LTOP program right so you know basically oh he also said that uh they planted bombs on cars when he was going out to court that's a fucking lie. Show me the paperwork since you say it's so easy to get. They had snipers on rooftops. That's bullshit. That's straight bullshit. Number one, right? You go out to court from a jail or a prison. The cars are inside the jail or the prison. They're not, no one has access to them, right? Except the guys in the jail or the prison. No one has access to slide up underneath the car and put a fucking bomb in it. Number two, there's a lot of different vehicles there. They would have no idea which vehicle he was being transported in, right? There's that. When you go into court, they take you into a secure area and take you out of the car and put you into the, the courthouse or the prison. So having a sniper, highly doubt it. Show me the article on it. There, there would be a court case on that easy to get information, right? Um, you know, it's just bullshit, dude. Um, yeah, it's kind of fucked up. But look, I did sit around and tattoo. 
And I did sit around and learn how to paint. I did try to be comfortable. I did quit using drugs in 1997, 98, right? I did flush a quarter ounce of speed down the toilet. Spent the last half of my prison time clean. Um, and you know, the art skills that I developed in prison, I use now. Um, I don't use my platform on YouTube to uh, sell art. I do let people know I have it, t-shirts, all that stuff. And you know, people seem to like what I have. I don't, uh, I don't, you know, I sell something people seem to like, and I appreciate the, the patronage to our website. Um, but I want to say something, I'm no expert on fucking rehab, and I'm no expert on self-help. But, you know, I did a lot of shit in prison. I survived a lot of crazy shit. Um, you know, while he was in the hole, because he was a gang member, and then PC, I was on a fucking main line, level four, level three, level two, and then home. And white dudes were locking up left and right. White dudes being locked up because they were supposedly predatory behavior. They went from locking up prison gang members to street gang members that exhibited predatory behavior to guys PCing up. So the white population on the main line became so fucking small. We had a really rough time. Uh, I mean, really rough. I lived in a fucking building in a level four prison with 20 white dudes. That's 10 cells out of 100. We had it fucking bad. So you know, I went through a lot of fucked up shit in there and I learned how to survive. And yes, you learn how to posture. Everyone learns that shit. Everyone learns how to read people, you know, not just individuals, but the whole environment. That's prison life, you know? It's nothing extraordinary about that. But, you know, uh, I, I did this channel because uh, Randy Grounds was my board member, was also his board member. And uh, he said, you know, guys like you are our biggest asset. Um, he said, you got a story to tell, and I want you to tell it. So that's kind of why I started doing this. And he said, when you get a chance to come back into these prisons, I'd like you to do it. Um, you know, that remains to be seen if I can do that or not. But, you know, we get a lot of people, uh, John Hall, love you to death. You know, he got clean on this channel. We got people, more than one person has gotten clean through our channel and our Wednesday night lives. I get messages on Instagram and email. I, I got people that are veterans that want to commit suicide that I communicate with. They're still alive right now. And I think partly because of the communication I have with them. And, you know, I, I never in a million years thought that, um, that this channel would lead to that, you know, and it, and it does my heart really well. I don't just do this channel to uh, promote myself and my t-shirts. Uh, he, he's real proud of the fact that he started this live, uh, love, live and prosper thing. We, you know, I, I, I started a t-shirt company, my own idea. It's not that big of a thing, you know, it is, but it isn't, uh, you know, look, man, uh, I don't like the guy. I don't give a fuck about him. Uh, like I said, I was never a prison gang member, so I don't care about him being a dropout. Um, people do. I don't like the fact that he was a predator and then became an informant and he lied on a lot of things. I don't, that's what I don't like about him. Uh, you know, there's people that are going to like him. There's people that will never like him. There's people that know he's full of shit. Um, my friends know that he's full of shit because they were in Tracy with him and they were in other prisons with him. Um, and they're stand-up motherfuckers that did life sentences and they're out. Uh, you know, they're not going to come on here. Some of them are in motorcycle clubs and they're not going to come on here. But, uh, you know, here's the deal. If you're just some guy who's having issues and he goes on this other podcast and he has, uh, he's very well versed. And let's face the facts. He survived prison when it was a violent time. You know, uh, he was a predator. He lived around predatory people. He, um, all that shit. He survived a lot of shit. He probably did some very violent shit. I agree with all that. But uh, that don't mean shit. A lot of guys did. But uh, he's very well spoken. He's very good at this, the shiny object. Look at the shiny object. Don't really look at the facts, like he says. 
the facts are the shiny object to him. Uh, but, you know, people watch podcasts that he's on and they get something from it. If they're having a hard time in life, uh, you know, or they need a little inspiration and he can give that to people that don't give a fuck about his past and his and his uh, his character, his true character, you know, whatever. Um, more power to them, you know. Uh, if he can turn his, uh, you know, his life of uh, whatever it was into something positive for some fucking guy or chick or whatever, um, good. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, you know, I never, uh, uh, one thing I want to do when I say, I never uh, advocate gangs and, and uh, all the criminal behavior. That's actually people that watch me over the last couple of years. No, I do exactly the opposite. So, you know, saying that if you disagree with him testifying, you know, you're inviting this bullshit. I, I, I teach people how to uh, follow their, their own thoughts and minds and develop, uh, you know, the ability to think for themselves and follow their own path in life. And I tell them sometimes about the pitfalls of following others down that dark path of criminality. Uh, uh, you know, uh, prison gang members are what they are. They're in an environment um, that is really rough to uh, exist in. So I don't hate on them, but I think that, uh, you know, youngsters should have the opportunity to find out there's a path in life that will lead them away from that and not to it. And I think if you ask anybody who's been in prison for a long time, even gang members, prison gang members, they would tell uh, some of them youngsters, you know, stay the fuck out of here. I actually met some youngsters on the main line that had been to Pelican Bay Shoe, and uh, they told me that, uh, you know, that's when all the prison gang members were locked up in Pelican Bay, and, and they were telling these youngsters, hey, get the fuck out of prison, you know, learn a trade, get your GED, get the fuck out of prison and stay out. So, you know, a positive message can come from a negative place. Um, just saying. Uh, so that's my take on Mr. Uh, Mr. Thompson's uh, current uh, interview. Uh, his case will probably drag on for a while because he's got some really good lawyers, evidently. And like I said, the proof is in the pudding. Um, there will probably be newspaper articles about it. You know, uh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> this is Smiley the Clown checking out. You guys get out there and do it hard. Whatever the fuck it is you do in life, do it hard. Thank you, folks.